My $10,000 misadventures getting an 83-300D painted. In one of my warehouses at my shop where I keep a few cars, in the corner, the darkest corner, the least accessible corner, is an 83-300D. You wouldn't know it, but it's a 76,000 mile one owner car from Fort Lauderdale. Champagne metallic, Palomino interior, 76,000 miles. No cracks in the dash, but a weird spot where some vinyl is missing. And this car happens to be the subject of a really frustrating story. Now, in 2013, when my sister and I were buying a lot of cars, a nice man and his partner offered me this car that his great aunt owned. So I brought the car back. I um, rebuilt the front end, cleaned out the gas tank, did a bunch of work to it. And then I said, it's time to get this car painted. Now, I said, where am I going to find a painter? Well, I went up to New York to visit um, two friends of mine that have both been on this channel. And um, I met a guy who was... Uh, sharing a unit with a, another friend of mine up there who was actually seemed like a very good painter. He had painted for Rolls Royce in Scottsdale, Arizona, and had also done a lot of Mercedes at the time. So he was painting cars for all the big dealerships in the Phoenix area. And he seemed like a really nice guy, very down to earth. I got to see his work. I got to see a, an Oldsmobile Cutlass that he said that he had painted that was like this really nice gold color. It almost looked like icon gold. And I said, well, the metal flake's not too big in this paint. That's very encouraging. You know, it doesn't look like garbage. Um, maybe uh, we can get something worked out here. And so what did I do? Well, I took the car apart down here because the paint shop should never take the car apart. Most of them don't know how to do that on a Mercedes, especially a 40 year old Mercedes. So um, one of my employees and I took the car apart, took the front glass out, took the back glass out, you know, pulled all the chrome off of the car, pulled the bumpers, the lights, the grill, etc. Then we set up the, um, the shipping and sent the car up there. So I called the guy and I said, Did you get the car? Yeah, I got the car. Can you, s I sent him, I sent him like, $3,000 to get started or 5,000. Maybe it was $5,000 to get started. I said $5,000. I don't get much of a receipt, which really annoyed me. Well, tried to get a receipt first red flag, but I said, I'm already there. I should, I should trust him. I've already spent, you know, 1100 for shipping and $5,000 at this guy. So then he calls me, he says, Hey, I need some more money. Okay. Can you get me some photos? He sends me some photos of the car where he shows like he's doing body work on it. I'm like, okay, I guess he's doing some work. $3,000 later, he comes back and he says, oh, I made a lot of progress in the car. I have some pictures. And he never provided the pictures. He said, oh, I'm having a problem with my phone, et cetera, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. So then he paints the car and, um, not just kidding. No, he keeps asking for more money. And um, asked for another $1,000. And I said, well, this is starting to get funny. Can you send me a documentation ledger? Doesn't send me a ledger, but said, I'm almost done with the car. I just need $300 more. So at this point, we're at $9,000. I sent him $300 more because he's like, oh, I can't keep the heat on. So finally, I start to get really annoyed with this guy. It's been two years and I say, why can't you give me any documentation or any photos? Well, he sends me some photos, car's still in primer, sunroof is out. Then he gets evicted from his building. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? <sighs> so I call up my friend who's his neighbor and he said, yeah, sure enough, he got evicted. I don't know where he went. He had to take the car somewhere else. Well, he takes the car somewhere else. I don't know how it gets there, but, um, at this point, I was just about done with him. And I said, where is the car? What have you done to it? I called the same guy who shipped it up there for me, which is a, he's a really great guy. His name is John Trout. He's a super guy, really great shipper, very careful. He finds the car, recovers the car. I pay him to bring the car back to Florida. After spending about $9,300 plus another $1,150 to have the car shipped. This guy did nothing to the car except leave it outside to get the car back. It's full of leaves, sunroof is out, front glass is out, back glass is out. You know, thankfully it didn't cause any irreparable damage, 
but man, was I pissed. And I guess one of the problems is that our society, especially a state like New York, where they punish you for carrying a firearm to protect yourself, you know, but they don't punish you if you decide to skip working out on cars and going to become a pot farmer, which is what I guess Wayne Adams did. His name was Wayne Adams, by the way. So this has inspired a real rage and hatred in my soul towards people who paint. And there's another event that I'll tell you about in another video where I got screwed over by another painter. And I just, I really just want a good painter, you know? I have, there's one guy in Tampa that's painting a 280 SE coupe for us. It's really good. And of course he's like in high demand, but he does very nice work. But the problem is that most painters always supplement their work with insurance work. And it's like, I just, I'm sick of it. You know, I just want somebody that's going to paint a car for me. Most people, no matter how much money you give them, no matter how many times you call them, they don't do the work. And I guess I can empathize because there are some people that wait years to get a car in my shop and it just takes a long time. But one of the things that I find most frustrating about, um, about this whole thing about car work and paint work and stuff, it's like, how are we supposed to restore cars if nobody paints the damn car? I don't know. It just, it just boggles my mind. I mean, my friend Tyler, who came to visit the other day, he's been waiting three or four years to have his 300D painted, you know, because there are no painters. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the solution to this problem is. I don't think there is a solution. And then most painters, I don't know if you notice or not, if you've ever dealt with car painters, but most, I'm, there are some that don't, you know, like the guy I work with out in Tampa is really nice and easygoing, but... Most of them are like hyperactive, can't focus, really crazy, you know, they're kind of weird, you know, or they're just way too laid back and they never get a damn thing done. So I hate dealing with painters. Prove me wrong. Leave your sob stories in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. And um, remember, it's not no big deal to get a car painted. It's a freaking pain in the ass to get it done right. So d remember that. Something is a pain in the ass. Don't screw it up in the first place. Amen. Amen. All right. See you later.